Well, hello and welcome to All Saints Little Tottenham's first ever virtual Chris Dingle service. This year, for many of us, we'll be feeling quite sad that we can't meet together on Christmas Eve as we normally do. As for most of us, it marks the start of Christmas. But isn't it great that we can meet our risen saviour from the warmth of our own homes, sitting in front maybe of an open fire without having to turn out in the cold? I feel a little bit like Val Dunican sat here, but don't worry, I'm not going to break into a rendition of chestnuts roasting by an open fire. But I do want to share with you a little bit about what Christmas means to me and a little bit about the Church of England Children's Society. So let us begin with a traditional Christmas carol. I thought we'd start our Chris Dingle service with a poem this afternoon. The people were angry. There was no joy or cheer. They knew that Christmas would be very different this year. People were confused. They felt a real sense of gloom. There is no way someone shouted, I'm doing Christmas on Zoom. Christmas is a time for love and affection. How can that happen if we lose our connection? One voice shouted, it's not going to work. 
Then everyone started shouting and going berserk. Just as the noise was becoming quite loud, a small voice of reason came out of the crowd. Listen up everyone and try to calm down. We understand the frustration all over town. It is clear that this year will not be the same. But that doesn't mean that Christmas will not will that Christmas has to be lame. Just think about Christmas and what it's all about. And again, all the people started to shout, it's all about crackers, snowmen and toys, and a mince pie, and Santa bringing rain presents with reindeers that can fly. With that, the crowd began to think thick and fast of all the Christmases they had enjoyed in the past. The small voice of reason spoke up once more. So when we strip back Christmas, what lies at its core? The town thought hard with all of their might. A bright voice shouted out, it began with a light. The light of Emmanuel, God now on earth. The courage of Mary who just given birth. The comfort from Joseph who stood by her side. The joy of angels filling the sky. The delight of the shepherds, tears in their eyes. Included in history, brimming with pride. As they looked at that baby lying in a manger, the hope they found in their newborn saviour. A star shone brightly which guided the way and led wise men to that first Christmas day. So when we think of this story, it's not about crackers or bizarre random presents in bright shiny wrappers. It's not about Santa or even mince pies. It's not about snowmen with coal used as eyes. As it might be a bit different from years gone before, but Christmas has love running right through its core. Such love from heaven, such love in this boy, and comfort and joy. That's right, cried a voice. We don't need to be close to show the people we care for most. We can draw them a picture or give them a call. We could write them a letter or wave from the wall. We can sing carols through the window that will make them feel better. I could gather pictures of us all being together. We can pile up presents and share that send them by post. And I suppose we could Zoom during our roast. So this Christmas time, let's strike the right note and make sure nobody feels alone. Yes, Christmas may well be different this year, but we can still send out love, hope and cheer. So don't hold back or show any resistance. Just shout out your love, even from a distance. Next, I'd like to remind us about what Christmas is about from the Bible. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census would be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, say, today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who were lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things 
and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're now going to have our second carol, Away in a Manger. Beautiful carol, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Now, let's turn our attention to the Chris Dingles. This is a first for me. I've never actually made a Chris Dingle before. A lot more complicated than I thought. But let's have a look at the Chris Dingles and see which each aspect represents. Now, Jesus showed us how we should live our lives and how to spread the light of Christ to others. This is our responsibility, but also it is the mission of the Children's Society who witness for Christ helping um, young children all over the world. Now, as probably many of you are familiar, the orange represents the world. But I think at a time like this, we need to remind ourselves that we do live in a beautiful world created by God. It says in Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The whole world is God's world and not ours. And it says in Genesis again, God saw that what he had created and it was good. As Christians, what are we doing to look after God's world? We have a responsibility to look after the world, whether this may be helping with huge environmental projects or maybe even picking up a bottle from the road in Little Totten. Then we have the four sticks, which represents the seasons of the year. It would be easy for us to say, oh, well, we still have seed time and we still have harvest, which we do. But if we also think about the way we've treated our land, it has affected the natural rhythm of our world. Thinking about greenhouse gases and forests that are chopped down and rising temperatures and overproduction. How many of us stick to buying seasonal fruit? I know my husband gets really cross if I buy strawberries at the wrong time of year. It's not the natural rhythm of the world. 
So are we looking after God's world? Do you see yourself as a servant or a master of the world? What about your favourite food? Do you know where it comes from? Isn't it incredible the different foods that have been provided by God for us? Do you thank God for his provision? When I stay at my dad's house, we always say grace before every meal as a reminder to thank God for our daily food. One of our favourites is, oh, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun, the rain, and the apple seed. Oh, the Lord is good to me. Maybe tomorrow before your Christmas dinner, you could say grace and thank God for his world and all the provisions he has made for us. Then we have the light. And you know, the Old Testament is full of promise that God will come and save his people. If you look in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10. But the light of Christ is not something that happened 2,000 years ago in history, but that light is there for us today. Christmas is about Jesus coming as the light of the world, 24th of December, 2020. Even in the midst of this pandemic, pandemic, God's light is still shining bright. And then we have the red ribbon. It would be lovely to leave our Chris Dingle with the light and slide over the red ribbon that stretches around the orange. What does the red ribbon represent? The, red, the orange represents the world and God's love surrounding the world. But it's the red ribbon that reminds us of the death of Jesus. In a strange way, the death of Jesus on the cross is the good news. That Jesus took upon himself all the wrongs that you and I have ever done. And he paid the penalty by dying on the cross. Jesus is the saviour of the world. But is he your saviour? Have you come before Christ and asked forgiveness for all the wrong things you have done? And have you gone the next step and accepted the forgiveness? Jesus reaches out to every one of us in love and longs for us to respond to him. A saviour has been born for us. Let's think about the shepherds. What did the shepherds do when they heard about Jesus? They went and worshipped him. How about you? Can you respond in the same way as the shepherds did? It says in Luke chapter 2, verse 15, when the great army of the angels had returned again to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see the wonderful things that have happened, which the Lord has told us about.
We come now to our prayers, bringing before God those things that are worrying us, the people we love and the world in which we live. Lord, we pray for your world and we thank you for the beauty we see. Let us think of all the places we love to go where we see the beauty of God's creation. And in your hearts now, thank God for that place. And then let us think of those places we've not looked after. Lord, we pray that you will guide us as how we can look after your world better. Lord, help us to understand the impact on your world and give us a heart for change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you now our government as we deal with Brexit. Lord, may you be in the middle of those negotiations. May all our leaders look to you for guidance. And Lord, we pray for all those people who are anxious about the outcomes. Lord, we pray for your peace in these really uncertain times. A prayer by a Bishop of Ireland. God, all loving and almighty, you preside over the affairs of people and nations with compassion and justice. We pray for all those involved in discussions and deliberations on Brexit. May they be mindful of the power entrusted to them and may they wield such power in the service of peace, stability and security. May they do this for the flourishing of our lives of your people day by day, as they live with the consequences and outcomes of their decisions. May your kingdom be known, and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This we ask in the name of, of the Father, through the Son, and by the truth of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we bring before you now the people we love. We pray for those who are struggling with loneliness. We pray especially for those who are not going to meet this Christmas time. Lord, help us to discover new ways to share Christmas together. Lord, we pray for the suffering, for those suffering with the consequences of COVID. We pray especially for those families who have lost loved ones at this time. May they know the peace of Christ in their lives. We pray for those who are ill or in hospital whether it be COVID-related or other illnesses, we pray for healing for them now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the work of a children's society. Loving Lord, we thank you for the children's society as it reaches out to young people experiencing pain and injustice. Guide and strengthen its work alongside children and young people who are homeless and on the streets in prison or facing problems in the community. Grant us the wisdom to listen and to, to the voices of the young and to recognize their gifts and insights. Help us to work with them to create a fair and just society where all may know the fullness of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And a Christmas collect. Eternal God, in the stillness of this night, you sent your almighty word to pierce the world's darkness with the light of salvation. Give to the earth the peace that we long for and fill our hearts with the joy of heaven through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And a final blessing for us all. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always on your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and the rain falls soft on your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. We have our final um, carol, which is Joy to the World.
So all it remains now for me is to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas from all of us at All Saints Little Totten. Thank you for joining us and hopefully we can meet together in person next year. <laughs>